Good evening, everyone. Happy summer. <laughs> Welcome to a meeting of the 100 and Central Regional High School Board of Education. Please be advised that this and all meetings of the board are open to the public and media consistent with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-6, and that advance notice required therein has been provided. Meeting notice was also posted in the boardroom of the upper school campus, sent to the Courier News, Star Ledger, Express Times, and the Hunter and County Democrat, and sent to the clerks of Delaware Township, East Danwell Township, Flemington Borough, Raritan Township, and Reddington Township. The public will have an opportunity to be heard as shown on the agenda. Can I have a roll call, please? Mrs. Blatfeld? Dr. Charney? Here. Mr. Davidson? Here. Mr. Fowler? Mrs. Kellogg? Here. Mr. Nickel? Here. Mrs. O'Donnell? Here. Mr. Richard? Here. And Mrs. Hughes? Here. Will you please rise for the flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I have a motion, please, for approval of the minutes from the May 16th, 2022 board meeting? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Charney? Yes. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes, for the 23rd, abstain for the 16th, I was absent. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. All yes, motion carries. And can I also have a motion for approval of the minutes on the May 23rd meeting? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion other than you, Mr. Richard? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Charney? Yes. Mr. Davidson? I abstain. I was not at that meeting. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Abstain. I wasn't here that day. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. We're good. Thank you. All yes, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have two items of correspondence on the agenda. And with that, we'll move into Dr. Boomer's superintendent report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hughes. Um, Jerry Walther was a, a ninth grader here and a member of our lacrosse and football teams. Uh, suffered injuries in a terrible accident at the end of May. Um, injuries to which he ultimately succumbed uh, after a valiant and heroic fight. Um, so it was very sad uh, at the end of our school year, but in that sadness, uh, I was awestruck, as, as I continue to be in, in these terrible situations, at the lengths to which our students took care uh, of one another both in our IMC uh, on that Friday and um, the 17th as they gathered to remember him and, and then later uh, at Jerry's service last week. Um, so, you know, his, his love has been in the room uh, with us as we've mourned his loss and uh, gave us the opportunity certainly to remember uh, the importance of love and support um, at the end of what has been uh, a trying year and, and continue to be through its very last day. Uh, so please join me in a moment of silence for Jerry and, and uh, with thoughts for his family and friends. Thank you. Uh, tonight's agenda includes um, the rounding out of our year with student and staff recognition. Uh, staff all-stars for both April and May listed on the agenda. I think we had just missed getting the, the April folks on last agenda. Um, we also have here our HIB and suspension report, which will continue to be updating as various situations resolve, even though school has, has closed. I do want to ask the board to hold on the action for um, the, the recommendation on the three HIBs, 54, 55, and 56, until after
closed session tonight. And uh, let's see, we also, um, in organizational items tonight, uh, some additional officials, anti-bullying specialists, and uh, children in court advisory committee liaisons. We also have the board calendar, as we discussed at our last meeting, um, indicating July, August, our retreat, and then a single meeting each month pending the outcome of our retreat to see if we want to change that schedule at all. Um, and with that, that's, that's what I have tonight, Mrs. Hughes, so thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Moore. So we have nothing to move right now from your report, correct? Correct. Okay, great. So that will take us into our first residence forum. Uh, this is for items on the agenda, actionable items for vote on the agenda. If there's anybody who would like to speak. We are moving the organizational. Yeah. 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 Hib is the only one we're holding. Is it okay to talk about 81, policy 8100 now? Uh, because yes, that's because it's up. on the, on the okay. agenda. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. Okay. Just if you could pause for one second, I just want to clarify. Sure. Yeah, organizational items will be after the residence forum, and then the Hib motion will be after closed session. Ready? Yes, thank <laughs> okay. you. Okay. Hi, my name is Sue Duggan. I'm a, a resident of Raritan Township. And um, I'm here tonight to uh, just, I've got a couple comments and a couple questions. Um, I first wanted to talk about policy 8100. So I appreciate the support um, and the intent of this policy. I think it's a, actually a really good thing for the school. But I do have some concerns um, that I would like the board to consider. Um, in particular, when I look at under the section of curricular, extracurricular, and support programs, um, there's a bullet. The second bullet here says eliminate systemic, organizational, and other barriers to prevent students from participating in the most compelling opportunities matching their aspirations, including but not limited to high level, higher level coursework. So I do have some questions about that. Um, to aspire is really a wonderful thing, but it doesn't always equate to having the capability to be successful. And so what I'm wondering is how can we be sure that the students will be set up for success? Will a student be allowed to fail if they put themselves in this situation and the school supports them? By including this so specifically in the policy, I'm just wondering how this is all gonna be managed. Um, can you tell some students yes and others no? If so, what do the parameters or guidelines look like to, like, I'd say legally manage this? How, how are we going to do this? We also have to be mindful um, not to disrupt or negatively impact students who are in these higher level classes who have already proven that they're capable and successful to be, to accelerate in the environment that they're in. So we want to be careful not to slow those kids down as well. So where do we find that balance? I also have a few questions and thoughts about the last section under building structures. So I know that we're hiring a new equity officer. I think that was approved um, maybe the last board meeting or the, or the time before. So does it make sense to push this policy through before getting someone in place and allowing them a chance to review the policy and kind of putting, putting their two cents in as well? Um, the last question I have is committing uh, funding to support comprehensive equity efforts, including celebration, recruitment, curricular and program revisions, professional development, and more. And my question um, here is, what exactly do we mean by recruitment? That wasn't clear to me. Um, that's all I had on policy 8100. I do have one other question about something that's on the agenda, and I think it's just that I need, you know, it'd be great if you guys could explain. Um, agenda item 18, there's summer curricular work that's listed. I think there's um, about 16 class categories that are gonna undergo um, work this summer for public curriculum document development. 
So I'm just kind of wondering, what's that all about? And is that like a normal occurrence? Do we have that many classes um, with the uh, curriculum being changed every summer? So that's, that's all I have, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Duggan, just so you know, we will um, reply, uh, possibly at the end at board comments. Dr. Moore or board members may be able to reply to some of your comments. If not, we will make sure we get you a comprehensive email. Um, with answers to your questions. If you would like to send me an email with all of those questions, that's fine, or we can sort of give a shot based on my notes to answer your questions. Okay, yeah, that would be helpful. I mean, especially if you're voting on it tonight, maybe sure. it'll come up in conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Santangelo, Reddington Township. So at the last Board of Ed meeting, um, in, in subsequent emails, parents have raised concerns about this policy, 8100. Superintendent Moore referred the parents to the Equity, Diversity, and Racism page of the school website. The website has three data items. Number one, the Equity, Racism, and Diversity Report. This is the out-of-date information that solely relies on the percentages that can be, be misleading. We've addressed this in previous meetings. However, requests for this raw data behind these percentages has not been given to us yet, despite several requests, so we're still waiting for that information. Um, number two, the anti-bias vision report. On page 29, for example, the report discusses how young people are often not equipped to distinguish misinformation about stereotypes, racism, et cetera, from fact. They cited a poll where only 44% of children feel that they can actually tell between the difference between fake news stories and real ones. So basically, young kids can't discern that information for themselves. And so this puts a, an enormous onus on the school to make sure that they're providing accurate information. And number three, racial awareness versus the anti-racism video where Mrs. Edmond discusses that racism is not binary and that everyone is racist on a continuum. Interestingly, at marker 23, she states, quote, some facts, some are facts, but a lot are interpretation, end quote. So I just urge everyone to watch that video for themselves. Um, these documents don't seem to be producing specific data points, but rather vague percentages and interpretations. So rather than delay the policy to where the specifics and actionable items can be outlined, where the data behind the policy can be shared and discussed, the board is moving ahead with a vote. Why not move forward with a policy in a more transparent and organized way? Policy 8100 is a very important subject and deserves to be treated as such, not in a rushed and, rushed and haphazard manner. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Santangelo. Greetings, everyone. My name is Joseph Krasavsky. I am a Messianic rabbi up in Washington Borough, New Jersey. I've been asked to come down here by friends and family that reside here in Flemington, uh, which we are very close with, of an issue that was, I guess, brought forth on the June 13th meeting that was here. I would like to share some things with you, and it is kind of a vent, so please forgive me if it sounds a little rough. It is. I'm here to represent God's word on a matter that was brought up on the last BOE meeting on June 13th. There were two matters stated that were quite disturbing that I would like to address this evening. The first is regarding Michael Lequeur. Michael Lequeur stated that he believes that his religion, the Jewish religion, was misrepresented when it said that there are only two genders. First off, what the heck does that mean? Second off, Second, rather, if it means what I think it's trying to say, then that statement is an insult to our creator. 
He also stated that he doesn't remember from his study of the Bible that there were two genders. What? He doesn't remember what? That there were two genders created by the Creator? What part doesn't he remember? In Better Sheet, sometimes called Genesis, chapter 2, verses 22 through 24, it states, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While he slept, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the area with flesh. And from the rib the Lord God had taken from the man's side, he made a woman, a woman, and brought her to him and said to the man, here she is. This is, and the man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She, she, and by the way, I just have here in the Hebrew, ish and isha, ish and isha, she and, and uh, man and woman. She is out of a uh, man, was, she was taken. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, isha, in the Hebrew, and they will become one flesh. United with his wife. The word for man is clearly and distinctively different from the word for woman. Ish is man and Isha is woman. Later in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 5, 2, it says, God has, it, God has written, he created them, male and female, and he blessed them and called them mankind. And in the day they were created, male and female were created, called mankind, two genders, male and female. That's all he created, was male and female. I don't know anything about anything less than six genders or whatever else was said. There's nothing in the Bible or in Torah that says that. Speaking of which, I'm sorry, but really that was an asinine statement by a licensed psychologist. And now Ms. O'Donnell. At the June 13th meeting, Rabbi, you made I'm going to ask you to please direct the board as a whole and no I'm sorry, individual board forgive member. Forgive me. There was a statement made at the June 13th meeting that said you may, uh, that was that sounded somewhat ridiculous and most definitely absurd. It was said, and I quote, "Backing up that experience of Judaism, while I am not Jewish, I did grow up in a Jewish community." I digress, please. I did grow up in a Jewish community. And then it was looking briefly online, looking briefly online, I found things like what the Torah teaches about gender fluidity and transgender justice, end quote. I'd like to give someone an opportunity to show me where it says that in Torah. Show me where it says that in the Bible. Because if you saw that online, pray tell, identify where in Torah it makes such an absurd, absurd statement as gender fluidity and transgender justice. The justice that I read, which is in Taurus, states regarding gender fluidity and transgender is not something that I would be happy about in any way whatsoever. Then later on, I heard this. The students who worked on the policy know better than us. The students who worked on the policy know better than us. I would like to quote something here from the Health Encyclopedia from the University of Rochester of, Medi of the Medical Center, which states this. Please listen. Understanding the teen brain. And by the way, I have that here if anybody cares to have a copy of it. Understanding the teen brain. It doesn't matter how smart teens are or how well they scored on the SAT or ACT. Good judgment isn't something they can excel in, at least not yet. The rational part of the teen's brain isn't fully developed and won't be until 25 or so. In fact, recent research has found that adult and teen brains work differently. Adults think with their prefront, prefront, prefrontal cort, uh, cortex, the brain's rational part. This is the part of the brain that responds to situations with good judgment and, our, and awareness of long-term consequences. The teens process information with their amygdala, this is the emotional part. In teens' brains, the connection between the emotional part of the brain and the decision-making center are still developing and not always at the same rate. That's why teens have overwhelming in emotional input. They can't explain later what they are thinking. They weren't thinking as much as they were feeling. And that's how it reads. As a rabbi and someone who is certified, a certified teacher in biblical and rabbinical studies and someone who loves God with all his heart and might, I find what was stated here on June 13th to be lacking any fact and very offensive to our Creator. And I am one who is personally upset by the ignorance and lies of what comes out of the school boards as well as the Board of Education here in these United States. So I pray for mercy. God doesn't spare, didn't spare Sodom and Gomorrah. Thank, Thank you. you, Rabbi.
My name is Marie Pagano. I'm from Reddington Township. Thank you. Wanted to say hello. Hi, Mrs. Pagano. I just want to make sure that you're speaking about something on the agenda for action. Sa safety of our school? I'm sorry? Safety in our school? Uh, I don't believe there's anything on the agenda for mm -hmm. vote on that. So you'll be allowed to speak, but it'll just have to be at the second residence forum. Um, this is only for items oh, so, on the agenda. So I'll wait. Yeah, Let okay. me, let's just no confirm problem. that there's nothing for vote on that, okay. but I don't believe there's anything. Okay. No, so thank you. For the second residence forum, general comments can come up. Is there anybody else who would like to speak at this first residence forum on items on the agenda for vote tonight? Okay, hearing none, we'll move into our organizational items. So we have two items. The first is to approve our uh, school officials for the 2022-23 school year, our anti-bullying specialists, and our children in court advisory committee liaisons. Can I have a motion, please? Moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on that item? Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Charney? Yes. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Oh, yes, motion carries. Thank you. And can I also have a motion uh, to approve the board meeting dates that Dr. Moore discussed, July 18th, August 22nd, and then our two retreat dates, August 29th and August 30th? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, and also following, as Dr. Moore said, one meeting going forward after our board retreat in August, unless we decide to continue two meetings a month. Uh, motion and a second, any discussion? Oh, hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Charney? Yes. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Oh, yes, motion carries. Thank you. We will move into committee reports. Mr. Richard, can we have a report on student life and programs, please? Yes, at the last meeting, we uh, presented uh, several items on which we're voting tonight. I'll just review them. Um, item number one is tuition and transportation for special ed students, as noted. Item number two is tuition and transportation for one specific student to the Matheny School. Item three are policies for second reading, including policies on postnatal accommodation for students, pupil intervention and referral services, HIB, emergency and crisis situations, and cooperation with law enforcement agencies. Number four, policies first reading on counseling services. Five, staff evaluation instruments uh, for next school year, including those for teaching staff, uh, counselors, and uh, administrators and teacher practice instrumentation modification to the NJDOE Office of Evaluation. Um, we have a item here to approve Ryder University, Hunter and Central Tomorrow's Teachers Program, a member, um, memo of uh, understanding, and Drew University uh, in-service agreement. We have a new club, the Baking Club, that we are also moving to approve tonight and an overnight field trip for the dance team to Spookinook Sports Complex in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. And finally, we have number 11 foreign exchange students to be approved from countries uh, all over Europe. Oh, even South America, we got Brazil here as well. So with that, I'd like to move items G1 through G11 for uh, tonight. Second. Qu question. Yeah, please. On item number four, the first reading of the counseling services policy. Okay. Well, Bruce, we'll let's take a motion, we'll vote on it, and then. We'll take the motion, then we'll open for discussion. Right. Oh, okay, we'll usually it's yep. any discussion before the vote. Yeah, so no worries. Okay. Uh, so I have a motion and a second. Did we get a second? Yes, okay, and so now any discussion. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I was just asking, okay. noting that I, I approve this policy, I think it's a great policy, well written, except my copy of it seems to be missing a piece called uh, accountability at the back of the policy. And I was wondering when we're gonna get that part of it or because I hadn't received that. Let me, in board docs, see if we have the appropriate. You pulling that off a of board docs, Mr. Davis? I did, I, unless there's a, there may be a later 
copy, or maybe it's going to be completed before the second reading, in which case I'd like to know. No, we do have, we do we have. We do have an accountability yeah, section. So let me. Um, see. I have a copy of the updated policy here. So I do have a copy of this here. Let me send this to everybody at the table. And uh, here I'll I'll read it aloud as well. It was just the it was just the accountability. Yeah, it's a short final section that okay. uh, we we revised based on the board's feedback in our last okay. meeting. So it reads as follows. Counseling Services Department will set annual goals and use data to measure alignment of practices with this policy. Measurements will include data on outcomes, and then in parentheses, including but not limited to student and parent satisfaction, and parentheses, as well as activity, open parentheses, such as interactions between school counselors and students, and parentheses, and will seek to provide longitudinal insight into the achievement of this policy's priorities. The administration will regularly communicate to the board and the community on policy goals, plans, and outcomes, and every three years the superintendent or designee will convene a committee to review and, as necessary, propose revisions to this policy. I've emailed that text to all of you as well. So that is the closing of the policy for first read. Apologies for that. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Did you have? To? Oh, yeah, but so I just had a comment. I had some, received some feedback about some of the language in that policy. Um, so are we going to reconvene with the committee one more time before second read? So is uh, the language that you're talking about substantive in any way, or is it word choice? Mm, it's more word choice. It's uh, feedback regarding um, the relationships uh, section of the policy um, indicated, did not seem to indicate race, ethnicity, or religion Understood. specifically. Um, and uh, I think that would be a good addition. Uh, it now says, I don't have the full policy in front of me, but it does says cult different cultural backgrounds, yeah. and so my suggestion would just be to include racial, ethnic, religious, and cultural yeah. backgrounds. Regardless of values, beliefs, abilities, sexual orientations, gender identification slash expressions, and cultural backgrounds, which is serving as a catch-all there, and you're talking about breaking that out into more specific terms. Correct. Um, yeah, so the Student Life and Program Committee can take a look at that language uh, uh, at its next meeting before July. Um, I don't think that change would stand in our way tonight from adopting the policy as a first read. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, you know, if, if that leads to uh, some adjustments in language, we can bring it back out on the table and determine then if it was enough to start the process over again. So does anybody have any comments about what Bruce had to say or comments about language that I just specifically referred to before we go to a vote on first read on the counseling policy? I have a question on sure. number seven. Number seven. seven. There's no, there are no numbers in this policy. About Ryder University. Oh, all right. Oh, on sorry. The, on the agenda, <laughs> on the agenda, not the policy. <laughs> Let me just catch Before up. Before he voted in mass on one through um, nine, through 11, I had a question on number seven. Go ahead. So Ryder University, it's uh, te tomorrow's teacher's program. Um, it's an MOU, but what what is that exactly? Is it for our students or is it for student teacher placement? So this is a, a memorandum of understanding with Ryder University that allows our students in our education child development sort of pre teacher program. You know, so students who are interested potentially in becoming teachers have some courses they can take with us. Uh, and what this allows is uh, they're able to receive um, transcript credit from Ryder University in a dual enrollment kind of context. So is it for seniors or underclassmen as well? I was say that again, I'm sorry. Who is it open to, seniors, underclassmen? 
So the courses are open to, I believe, sophomores and up, but these, these, these credits, uh, I believe, are limited to the top end of that, of that three-course, multi-course sequence. So top end meaning the the last of the senior. the last courses of the sequence. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments about the student life agenda? Okay. So we have a motion and a second for one through eleven. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Charney. Yes. Mr. Davidson. Yes. Mrs. Kellogg. Yes. Mr. Nickel. Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell. Yes. Mr. Richard. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes. Yes. Oh, yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Operations and transportation. Mr. Nickel. Yes. We have a few more items we're looking to take action on this evening that were not um, discussed two weeks ago at the last meeting. We have, uh, we're looking to approve renewal of the Snyder bus service uh, transportation routes. Um, looking to approve the sale of several uh, transportation vehicles. Um, we need to return money to maintenance reserve after closing out some emergency construction projects due to damage we received from uh, Ida. Um, looking to approve Department of Education application fee for the new uh, science lab renovation. Uh, Chromebook valuation, we are revising from $25 to $7 uh, based on a fair market value of a four-year-old Chromebook. We have, uh, we received a donation for a Jerry Walther uh, fundraiser that we want to accept on their behalf to be distributed to, their fa to his family. We also received a donation to pass along to the Cedarbaum family for a fire. And then the VFW um, uh, had an additional request for some, uh, for 10 used Chromebooks uh, that we want to approve. Uh, with that, I'd like to move items H1 through H27. So moved. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Charney? Yes. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Oh, yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Personnel, Mr. Davidson. We have 26 items tonight, all to be moved. And I'll just run through them. Uh, many of you have heard these before, last meeting. where We have retirement uh, this evening. We have... Um, one retirement, custodian, we have one resignation. We have a number of contractual appointments. We have a nine of them, per diem, one per diem appointment. Hourly appointments, we have 16. Proctors, monitors, test coordinators, these all come due on the 30th because this is the last time that we can prove them f for future without having to fragment their pay into before and after June 30th. So uh, this all, the June 30th uh, agenda is heavy. Uh, advisors on item seven, um, we have coaches, item eight. Um, and there are quite a few coaches. You're flipping through this manually. Um, special services, we have summer work. And now we get into a whole bunch of um, motions that have to do with summer work. Um, the uh, nurses, uh, special services, summer work, ESY teachers, therapists, and behaviorists. Um, e ELL intake testing personnel, four of them. Summer bridge program instructors, that's not for the game of bridge, that's bridging. <laughs> Despite the way it's written, okay. Uh, we have summer aspire credit completion instructors for those aspire students. Uh, summer Institute and Summer School Instructors, 
summer academy ELL instructors, summer curriculum work. I can only marvel at the amount of services and that we are providing to our students this summer. It's wonderful. Uh, we have many um, summer curriculum noted here, pages of work that's going on by department listed. Okay, we have, um, then we have, oh, let's see, come on, pages stick together. Yes. Okay, we have a few leaves of absence. Um, and we have professional development, which is always important, along with workshop attendees. Uh, professional development uh, are courses, the workshop attendees are separate courses given and attended on an hourly basis by a, and a large number of our staff. Um, a very large number of our staff. <laughs> You're going through the agenda. It's a number of pages and it comes down to, yeah, it comes down to 66 of our staff. Uh, we have a second reading on policies examination for cause. We're abolishing a posi uh, positions, uh, three positions. This was, I think, mentioned last week, but I'll say again, these are, a rest these note the restructuring, okay, of some of the staff by Dr. Moore and creating a new position, which is in the next, <clears throat> in the next item of 24. Item 24 is a sidebar agreement with um, the HCEA, and I'll ask Dr. Moore just a brief comment on that. So uh, item 25 is an annual sidebar that we do with HCEA that takes uh, leftover um, uh, club stipends money uh, and then splits it out to uh, club advisors of volunteer clubs, you know, meeting certain criteria. The club has to be in existence for several years. The, the advisor has to have been the same person over several years. So we do this each year at the end of the year to disperse uh, the rest of that money to staff who have been working so hard on those clubs throughout the year. And finally, uh, item 26, revisions, and these are normally found in most agenda for revisions as recommended by the superintendent to changes of dates mostly. This is to leaves and things like that. So I move that the board approve items uh, one through 26. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to move again only because there's one correction to make on I-7. Okay. Number 50, what is it, number 55? Uh, Number 55, it looks like a digit was dropped from the stipends there. It should be 3,140. And it's, it reads as comma 140 instead of 3,140. So um, just need you to move as amended. Yes, so I moved items one through 26 as amended by Dr. Moore. Second. I have a motion to second, any discussion? Um, the only other item that I wanted to talk about quickly here, um, some of the revisions involve a couple of additional hours that we required for some of our uh, staff working on grant funded um, committees. Uh, so th those are paid through our ESSER grant, but we have our equity audit school climate and culture committees where some folks took some additional hours to round out the end of those projects. I think that's all that I have. Uh, and I shared with all of you, there were some additional items, some um, teachers who we were lucky enough to lock down for next year, uh, some other staff uh, for next year that are new since our last meeting on the 13th on the agenda. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Any other comments? Okay, hearing none, can I have a roll call, please? Dr. Charney? Yes. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. Oh, yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we'll finish up our committee reports. Ms. O'Donnell with Racism, Equity, and Diversity, please. Thank you. Um, so tonight uh, we move policy 8100 um, to first, for first reading. And uh, I would just, you know, add to some of the comments that um, 
How long have we been working on this, Dr. Moore? Uh, this was a board goal set in our retreat last summer, um, so it's been a year-long project. That I've, we've been, I've yeah. thought so. I thought maybe more, yeah. but about a year. So I guess I just wanted to put that out there in response to this being rushed or haphazard. I would say it's been very carefully um, considered and worked on, and, and I don't think anyone who was involved in it was um, haphazard in, in this work. Um, so with that, I'd like to move that for first read tonight. Second. second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Mr. Davidson. Okay. I uh, had the privilege of uh, reading this policy in detail recently. And while I totally approve of the aims and procedures in it, I think there are a number of word cha wording changes that are necessary in order to make it much more comprehensible. And I would like to... Um, meet with the committee and go over those. There's quite a few of them. I just want to give you an example, because one of you might say, well, give me an example. Got it. Right in the beginning of the policy, it says, grow capacity. What does capacity mean? Mm -hmm. I'm a scientist, and I have an MBA, I'm well read, I've experienced, and capacity is a technical term. How much fills, how much water is in this bottle? That's the capacity of it. So I don't understand that word in this context. Yeah. And I have a number of those kind of changes within the wording of these policies, and I'd like to discuss those. I find it really important that this policy be really easy to understand, not only for us, but for the students, for the staff, and moreover, for the public. Mm -hmm. This is gonna impact our community, and not everybody <clears throat> understands technically uh, education-oriented terms, if that is one, and somebody can explain that to me. And there's a number of these in this. However, I'm not objecting to the aims of this policy, the mission of this policy, just the explanation, the wording of it here, so we can understand you know, what, it's, what it's trying to do more plainly. So if I understand you, Mr. Davis, so you have a couple of wording choice or a, a, a few wording choice things that you'd like to discuss and capacity is a good example of the kind of thing right. that you're I talking have, about. I have yeah. maybe seven or eight or nine All of right. them, you know. So capacity, yeah, you're right. That's an educational jargon term and it means something different from what it, what it might mean in science and, and I can certainly appreciate where that would strike uh, the reader who's not in education as, as unclear. Um, right. So like the counseling policy, if they're, if they're not substantive, if we're talking word choice changes, right. I think we'd be okay to move forward with the first read, uh, vote, have the committee conversation, and then if we come out of that committee conversation with changes that are beyond just word choices, you know, then, then we can talk about it then. Otherwise, we could move forward uh, on second read with, with, those, with those word choice changes. I, I have no objection as long as the opportunity to present the changes are given and the committee can consider them. All right, so we'll, we'll have you come into this, to the Racism, Equity, Diversity Committee and, and chat with us about some of those thoughts. Okay. Thank you. Um, and one thing I just want to add to Mr. Davidson's comments, um, I was on the Racism, Equity Committee with Mrs. O'Donnell and Mr. Richard. Uh, one of the things we did talk about is once this policy is approved, putting together a sort of streamlined, mm -hmm. bullet-pointed, um, clear one-pager for students. Um, because students are very interested in policy, and they should be, and we encourage that. Uh, so we talked a lot about once we get through formalizing and voting on and approving the policy, you know, maybe next steps is to just put together a very, uh, a more simplified um, explanation of the policy goals um, and expectations for particularly for students and families. So that's to come. Thank you. Excellent. Oh, and can I add something? Yeah, of course. Yeah, just to clarify also, um, uh, the thank you to the speaker who mentioned, um, who gave us the explanations about um, adolescent and teen development. Um, I actually had the opportunity to work with teens in that capacity um, and, and learn quite a lot about their development. And I guess I should clarify when, when I say that the students know better, I think that the clarifiers that I was speaking to their experience walking the halls, that it's important for us to listen and not sort of foist a policy on them that's from the grown-ups. So, um, so that, was, that was the capacity that I meant uh, 
that the students are important and, and have a lot to say. Thank you, Ms. O'Donnell. Anyone else have any comments? Yeah, oh. Just to share, too, it, in all of the work that we did uh, in interviewing folks in other school districts across the country who have similar policies, I think one of the things that stood out was um, the involvement in students through the crafting of the policy and also its implementation. And I think that's where um, you know, we, we saw it in best practices uh, out there as well. So thank you for that. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Charney? Yes. Mr. Davidson? Yes. Mrs. Kellogg? Yes. Mr. Nickel? Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes? Yes. All yes, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, additional board business, I just have one item. Um, at our next meeting, July 18th, our board council will be there to do our annual ethics training. Um, if anybody would like to discuss now at the table or think about it and let us know if there's any particular topics that you would like her to address in addition to our ethics training, uh, please let me or Dr. Moore know, or we could talk about it if anybody has any ideas right now. Um, but she certainly is open and available to speak on current current laws, you know, current issues in the law. Anybody have any thoughts or want to take a moment and get back to us about it? Yeah, okay. Any other additional board business? I did, I did want to mention too, um, one of the questions I, I forgot to mention during the Student Life and Program Committee vote, um, the public facing curriculum documents that are listed on the agenda there, uh, what we've been doing over the past several years is migrating our curriculum documents out of a, out of a siloed system called Atlas into a more user friendly, publicly available system. But what that's involved is a lot of reformatting of those documents as they've been exported from that system. So the goal of this project ultimately uh, will be to ensure that we have all of our curriculum guides um, available online through our website, uh, through, our, through our course catalog or through some other section. So that's, that's uh, going to take a lot of brute force work on those drafts over the summer and that's what all of those projects are about. So that's, that is a unique thing. We don't do that every year. Um, that's unique to this year in, as we complete that migration out of the Atlas curriculum system and, and make those uh, documents, um, kind of break them out of that silo. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Any other comments? Any additional board business? Actually, yes. Dr. Uh, Dr. Moore, I do have a question about, are you saying that we, we are transitioning from Atlas Rubicon Atlas, Atlas Rubicon? Yeah, so we've been so, moving away from Atlas so for what, several years. What are we migrating to? What platform? Um, so we're going to house those documents as documents. Um, Google Docs, you're saying? Yeah. And what was the decision behind abandoning uh, Rubicon Atlas? Um, we felt that its measurement approach was out of date, uh, sort of hearkening back to uh, an earlier era of Common Core sort of accountability. Um, a lot of districts that went on to Rubicon Atlas did so for accountability reasons that we haven't had to deliver on. Um, also, it was running us between nine and $15,000 a year and was just not, not living up to um, its promises in the way that we were implementing it in terms of really measuring outpacing and, and being a portal for everybody to use. So we figured we might as well cut loose while we could, make the curriculum documents uh, more responsive to each discipline's kind of needs, and then also be able to produce them in a more user-friendly public way. So do we have, I, I know Rubicon Atlas had the deliverable of determining standards that were covered, or uh, I mean, you said core, yeah. or, uh, common core, but they, they've migrated to sta New Jersey standards. You can whatever, you, you can pick whatever state standards you want from their menu, but how are we monitoring uh, whether teachers uh, complete standards? So the state doesn't consider any amount of coverage as indicative of meeting the standards. It's more about the assessment of student achievement. And so our movement toward LinkIt over the past several years has been complementary to this to ensure that we're measuring standards through achievement rather than, well, we taught it. You know, because um, the state is, is much more interested in its accountability purposes for 
um, whether or not you know, we can show student achievement of the standards. And, and teachers also do hand in lesson plans and align to standards on a regular basis. So we're not without that alignment, it's just that uh, we're measuring it on the outcome side a bit more rigorously uh, than on the lesson planning side. So, uh, but will supervisors be able to have a search function, for example, uh, in, a, in, our, in a Google Doc format to determine that a standard was, was covered February, March, what, whatever. I, 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 I appreciate that uh, the state assessment is an indirect affirmation of whether a standard is covered. I, I think it's a baseline uh, coverage or completion. I'm more interested in, as an, as an institution that monitors uh, completion of curriculum, what are we doing uh, beyond New Jersey SLA uh, to determine that, that curriculum is covered uh, or completed? I don't like the word covered. Completed, um, in, in, engaged. So I'll, I'll differ on one point with you, and then I'll answer your question much more directly. I mean, so the curriculum training I've had and the conversations I've had with the state have always indicated that it doesn't matter what you say you covered. It doesn't happen unless you actually assess that it has happened. And so through assessments is how we determine whether or not we've covered standards. That's sort of the, the ethic behind this move here at, at Central. Um, but I do want to assure you that every one of our curriculum guides in every unit uh, and every one of our lesson plans does align to um, state standards down to the, the, you know, the progress indicator level. So supervisors are able to determine where teachers are, um, what they should be covering in the curriculum, where they should be focusing their lesson objectives. You know, all of that is clear. It's just uh, we haven't found it necessary to have all the reporting capabilities that you know nine to fifteen thousand dollars a year for Rubicon Atlas gave us. Um, we'd much rather have it on the assessment side and see well what did the students actually you know able what, what were they actually able to perform, um, and that's where all the accountability for us has been with the with the Department of Ed anyway. So we feel that's a better way to spend the money on on Linkit rather than on Rubicon. Um, Rubicon was was notoriously difficult for for many of our staff to use and didn't give us great options, although they have some options, didn't give us great options for user-friendly versions to put out to the public. I, I have no, um, I've, wor I've worked with Rubicon um, in various districts. Uh, I'm not, you know, wh whatever we choose yeah. is, is fine. I just want to know that we have something that is a full, not as a fallback, that will replace Rubicon efficiently and meaningfully. Um, and you're saying we can do it with our, with our uh, Google, Google Doc system um, and our monitoring of lesson plans, et cetera. Yeah. Well, and, and beyond that too, I think we do it in a really robust way through the weekly PLCs that we have enshrined in our practice and also just through the fact that we do indeed have department supervisors. Not all districts have those. Um, and we're very lucky to continue to have department level supervisors who can work closely with each teacher and make sure that everybody's meeting uh, the standards through their lesson planning. Um, so uh, uh, the fallback there isn't just Google Docs, it's also the realization that we have robust structures to make sure that everybody's talking about and keeping track of um, how they're meeting the state standards through the curriculum. Um, and so we're proud of that work uh, and, and just saw again that, that Rubicon Atlas was, was not necessary for us to have um, in order to, 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 to track our alignment through teaching to the standards. Any additional board business? Okay, then we'll move into our second residence forum. Mrs. Pagano, do you wanna start us since you've patiently waited? Uh, just a reminder, it's 30 minutes in total. Everyone gets five minutes to speak. You'll get a warning at four minutes that you have a minute remaining. Please state your name and municipality and write it on the sheet. Uh, 
Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Marie Pagano, and um, I'm concerned about the safety at the school. Could you please just state your municipality for the record? Oh, Where Reddington Township. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Reddington Township. Um, my concerns, you know, kind of reflect from the incident that happened in May, you know, May 16th. Um, and on June 8th, just so you know, people might be aware of, there was an incident that occurred on the 9-10th lunchroom. A current, a current student, Viana Sanders, absorbed, like, she saw two students enter the lunchroom, and they were speaking to other students. And they were, they were, they were taking pictures, and they were laughing how they snuck into the school, okay? And... Um, they were taking photos and just bragging about, um, you know, how they just walked in, you know, and they had backpacks on, um, and they uh, heard what we need now is an ID for lunch, and we could eat lunch here. So Brianna reported this right away to her security guard, Mark Crawford, and he told Brianna to go to the mid-campus office to report the incident. Brianna wrote down what was seen and heard during lunch. This incident caused a great deal of alarm for Brianna. She's a new student here, and um, there was like she didn't understand like what why what did they do about it? And nothing was sent home, no emails, nothing. The only letter that was received was um, a letter to her guardian congratulating Brianna for bringing this incident up. You know, awareness of this happening. Mr. I guess Estrado, 11th grade vice principal, was contacted twice by the guardian of Brianna, and never the, the calls weren't returned. Now, how did we know about this? Well, a letter came, a praise referral, which is nice. The school sent a praise referral home um, saying to Brianna, grant, congratulating her for the great, um, which she referring to the office, saying that recognizing the characteristics of this student so I personally spoke to Brianna, and I said, well, what, what did you, um, what made you, like, say something and do something? And she said, I didn't want to get shot. I saw two, two students with backpacks on that bragging. They were in the school. They don't belong here. And for them to easily walk in like that it concerns me, okay? And it should concern all the parents. I also, after the incident in uh, May, I come to the parking lot and I pray. I pray the rosary. I pray for protection of all the students, and, you know, every student here. And my concern is I really don't believe that we're, it's safe. And this is an incident of how people can just walk in here, walk in between classes, and no one even notices them. So that's my concern. Thank you. Can I just ask you a question, Ms. Pagano, because I, I didn't catch the beginning. What was the date that you said this occurred? Uh, June 8th. And your statement is that on June 8th, two individuals who are not students at Hunter and Central right. entered the school with backpacks into the cafeteria and sat down and had lunch. Right. Nine, ten lunchroom, yes. And bragged about it. Look, all we need now is an idea that we can have lunch. <laughs> it's not funny. It's terrible. It's scary. So I'm concerned about the thank safety you for, thank you of for the students. Thank you for letting Hi, I'm Sharon Winnick from Raritan Township. My children have gone to this school. I've had the pleasure of working at this school. Now, I know the past few years have not been easy. Um, to say that would be an understatement. You've weathered a pandemic, a volatile political climate, tragedy after tragedy, which you had no control over. I think you've handled it beautifully. Um, I've heard so many compliments about the end of the year, as tragic as it was. You also were able to serve the teachers ice cream near the end, the staff, and I know a lot of them appreciated it. But the problem with our society is people only come to the meetings when they have something bad to say. And I have nothing bad to say. You were able to keep the books in the library because you teach students how to think not what to think. And I know there are a lot of people 
in the hundred and central community who do not come to the meetings but do appreciate everything you do and i i would be remiss if i would let this year pass without saying thank you to each and every one of you thank you My name is Jack Rizza, and I'm from Reddington Township. I graduated from Central last year, and one of the things I think you guys should be focusing on is the climate survey uh, results that just came out. So when I was in school, my friends and I thought that these surveys were a waste of time uh, because none of the feedback we provided was ever changed in the school. We just thought you guys did the surveys as a way to make the administration look like they were doing something, but nothing was actually done to address any of the issues that the students presented. The results of this year just came out and they strongly support my experiences as well. For example, 24.6% of the students stated that they don't feel safe in the bathrooms. 19.3% feel that they don't feel safe in the hallways. This re reflects similar bathroom stats to the survey results from when I was in school. There's essentially no changes to the safety issue in the last few years, which is a huge problem. And we know that from many parents as well as my own experience that kids are choosing not to use bathrooms and will wait all day until they get home. This is not only a safety issue, but it's also a health issue. There are lots of things going on in the bathrooms that shouldn't be happening, including drugs, uh, marijuana, popping pills, vaping, all which I've witnessed myself. We felt like everyone in school knew this was going on, students and staff, and just looked the other way. Kids that I stay in contact with today still feel this way. We felt like the school didn't really care about the students, which is also evidenced by the climate survey results. 14.9% said they don't feel safe, they don't feel like they matter to anyone. 25.3% said that they only mattered a little bit. 34.4% said they felt like they somewhat mattered. You talk about inclusivity and you create policies based on that, but it's clearly not working since the majority of your students didn't feel like they mattered. When asked about how often students at Central are able to work out disagreements with other students, 15.8% said almost never. 26% said once in a while and 40.3 said sometimes. This has clearly been shown to us on multiple occasions, whether it's fighting between students or the May 16th protest, which did turn into a riot. This seems, more, this seems like there's more and more violence shown towards each, towards each other when it shouldn't really even be a, an option for students to work at their disagreements. However, this is how students are being taught on how to communicate with each other. There's a sense of no respect towards one another, and it's concerning that you guys aren't doing anything about it. So why not concentrate efforts on addressing many of the concerns and, how low, uh, and the low marks the school has received? Surveys are only as good as the action taken uh, based on the students' feedback. I've been to quite a few of these board meetings and every time it seems to be the same response. You know, it takes time, we need to look into this, we can't talk about this now, but we'll get back to it later, which are all valid responses, but words are meaningless without action. And from what I've seen and um, the responses you've given, I still stand by my opinion that you don't care about the safety and concerns for every student, but rather only a select few. If you truly want to help and create a better environment for students, you need to listen to all of them and be open to their feedback, even if you don't want to hear it, including post-graduates like myself. So that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, good evening. Thank you for being here. My name is Jim Vargas. I'm a, I've been here before. I'm a, a resident of, of Raritan Township. And the reason why I'm here tonight is uh, the last time I was here, I wanted to address the division and inclusion law that came out. And the two things into it that said, one, that uh, the gender selection of a child or student would be, have to be accepted, but that you didn't have to notify the parent. And we asked that you would form a policy that, even though you didn't have to, that you would inform the parent. 
The second thing is in the, uh, uh, the new diversity law that in every lesson plan you have to build towards diversity and inclusion. And I'm asking that you make the lessons plan for a number of reasons now uh, public to people who ask you without going through the Oprah or, and that type of thing. Today, we are running to many things, and, and there's a question on what schools are doing. You just heard a student here. And we need to understand, are we educating or indoctrinating, okay? So when you are dealing things with, like, slavery, are you only dealing with the slavery that we had in this country 200 years ago? Or are you talking about worldwide slavery that's been around since the beginning of time? When you talk about slave ships that were sent over here, do you mention that the African slaves are the ones who conquered these people and put them on the slave ships and sold them in here? And then are you even taking it further today, the problem of human trafficking that is so huge, that is big in not only in the state and our big cities, but we have a, one, a problem with Lambertville. Are you covering it all the way? When you deal with issues, and it's going to become hotter now today with uh, the Dobbs case just being solved, is when you deal with woman's choice and what's going on in New Jersey, are you not only lauding the choice of a woman that decides to terminate your pregnancy, but are you lauding the choice of a woman that chooses to keep her pregnancy and live with it? Okay. Are you lauding the woman that sits down with a Dow child and says, I'm going to love this child? Do you protect the Dow person for, for having a life when you know that they love and they are loved? And today, many people walk away from it. When you look at things like uh, what happened to George Floyd and the Harwelling there, you recognized him. But did you may recognize Amy Caprio, the Boston officer who was shot and run over by a person robbing a house and left there for the same number of minutes? Did you envy her life? Is not her life important? These are type of things that go on when you go into and you're dealing with immigration. Are you talking about the wall only? Or do you tell our students that the America is the number one country in legal immigration and the number one country in illegal immigration? Are you covering these things? Are you being fair? Again, when you go back to the, the question of choice, do you talk about the alternatives? In my day, we didn't have abortion. But in the new day, one in three pregnancies are terminated in New Jersey. If you're sitting there, that means a profile forward, one, two, three, you don't exist. One, two, three, you don't exist. One, two, and on and on. My personal story for abortion, I was born in 1953. My mother was 16. My dad was on his way to Korea, and she was unwed. My mom is a nice lady, but she's weak, and she took the easy way out. If abortion was available to her, I wouldn't be here. Don't I have a right to a life? Can I fight for my own existence? Don't we know it? Those are the type of things to bring to the table that need to be discussed. And most recently, uh, and this is where you know, people talk about school boards uh, being involved, uh, the case today, and I don't know if you heard it, of Joseph Kennedy was decided by the Supreme Court. Joseph Kennedy, seven years ago, was a football coach who prayed after the games, and he was fired by the board. He was recently approved, the, the Supreme Court voted in favor of Joe Kennedy. He can pray at the games, and that's good. I would not, there was a, uh, my family has a, pro, uh, 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 my niece is a transgender. It's a really serious thing to deal with, right? There's a woman and a man that would talk about transgender in the library. I don't agree with it. I know they were putting forward their ideas, but, you know, they have a right to. So did Joe Kennedy. Finally, the reason I'm saying this is, I said I'm Jim Vargas from Flemington. I am. I'm also James E. Vargas, a member of St. Magdalene's Parish, and I am the director of, of life for there, and I minister to over 3,000 families who come to the school, many of them. I am going to be working with them. I'm going to be working with the Diocesan of Metuchen. I'm going to work with the New Jersey Catholic Conference, among others, to bring together a group that will sit down and talk to you about these issues. Hopefully, we can have an open dialogue. But going back to the thing of those three things of making a policy that you would notify parents when there's a gender issue, opening up lesson plan, and going back to the new sex standards that are so aberrant, make it easy to opt out or have a negative one rather than opt in, have, uh, they have to opt in partially. It's crazy what's going on with sexual standards today. The stuff that's going on in magazines is enough, and this is something we've got to get around right. So I will contact you, uh, number one. I look forward to discussion with you. And then I'll use this little forum, the three to five minutes, to give an update. Thank you, and God bless this country. Thank you, Mr. Burke. We have about 15 minutes left for public comment, which is three more speakers. So if you're interested in speaking, you can come up to the mic and wait your turn. 
Hello, my name is Corey Prokapis. I'm a resident in Highbridge, New Jersey. Um, I just came up to uh, really agree with what, what Joseph had to say and also have sympathy uh, with, with um, this graduate over here. Um, I graduated high school in 2014, um, and a lot has changed in my life since I've graduated high school. Um, I'm an unashamed follower of, of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Um, that's his Hebrew name, his, his Jewish name, Yeshua. Um, and I, I can say that my experience in high school is really a pity. Um, you know, I, I, I reflect back and um, I really, it's, it's, it's exactly what he, he said. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot his name already, but, um, you know, I reflect back. I, I didn't learn a thing about doing my taxes. I didn't learn a thing about how to, how to manage money. Um, a lot of it was, was very um, pressure-based off of the, the culture that I was in in high school, where mainly, I mean, most of I, as well as my fellow peers, did nothing but, but drink and party and carry on. Um, we, we really didn't care about grades or any of that stuff. Um, it was all nonsense to us. Um, and we, we didn't feel like the teachers really cared at all. So, um, and I'm here to, to say this because um, there is such thing as truth. Uh, there's such thing as, as, as right and wrong. And that's important. People need to know that. Um, whereas when they, my experience going into high school, th there was none of that. There was no accountability. There was nothing of that sort. Um, this nation is, is, was, was based off of the Judeo-Christian values. That's what built this nation. That's what made it so great. Um, and I'm not sure if you're teaching that in the history classes. I know I didn't learn that in the history classes. I learned more outside of high school than I did inside of high school. Uh, I failed in Spanish uh, in high school, whereas I, I know more Spanish now outside of high school. In fact, I not only know Spanish, but I also know Hebrew, uh, Aramaic, uh, classical Greek, as well as um, a little bit of Arabic. Um, and so I, I just want you guys to understand, do, do you recognize that there's a problem with society? Do you understand that, that there's a, a fundamental issue that's, that's happening in the next generation with the way that they're being raised, with the way that they're being educated? Um, it's, it's very important that you understand that. Um, you know, I look back at the way that uh, education was in the 1800s, and they had a better education than, than we did. Um, so, you know, and, and I say this not to, to bash you guys over the head, but to, to sincerely, you know, bring this to your attention. It, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. It needs to be addressed. Um, and so I just want to have you guys consider those things that have already been said. Um, and we know that in God's word, we know that man, he created man in his own image. Do people know that? Do people know that they have a purpose that was given to them by their creator? Because I know many of my fellow peers that aren't around today because they didn't know that. They didn't know that. So they're, they're not here with me right now. So that's, that's really all I have to say. Thank you. So. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? We have time for two more speakers. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Aylin. Could you please write your name down and municipality um, and then just tell us your name and where you live? Uh, so I'm Aylin, uh, municipality I believe Ryerton. Uh, this is my first time speaking or even being at a meeting like this. So forgive me if I'm a little nervous. That's I wasn't fine. even going to speak, but I felt compelled to speak. Um, yesterday, uh, my mother 
and my sister and I attended the New York City Pride Parade. And I believe that, God, I think I'm blanking right now, but there was so much love at this Pride Parade. There was so much love for everybody there, not only no matter who you were, what you identified as, and in a weird sense, that's where I felt the most, like the closest to what, if we're speaking of a Judeo-Christian God, of what he said about love thy neighbor and just spreading love and accepting it. Because if we are made in God's own image, why would he make somebody, you know, gay or transgender or gender fluid? Just excuse me, excuse me. I'm gonna ask that you refrain from commenting and being disrespectful to the speaker. You can continue. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you cannot. I was speaking to an individual in the audience. It wasn't you. Go, go ahead. Sorry that you were interrupted. Um, Take a moment. It's okay. Take a moment. Yeah. You're talking about love. I feel like where things like transgenderism isn't talked about, suicide rates are up. People who aren't told about this and the fact that some schools could reveal potential gender differences which put the person experiencing them at risk. It's something that has always been around but has maybe not been, we haven't been able to talk about it as much as we used to, which is why now more than ever, I believe that it is important to acknowledge that not everybody subscribes to Judaism or Christianity or whatever religion you think. So, and even if everybody did, the interpretations of Bibles have been changed since it was written over a thousand years ago. The word homosexuality wasn't even in the Bible until the 19th century. My grandmother worked for Planned Parenthood. No woman walking in there for an abortion was doing it flippantly. No woman walking in there left thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna get another abortion. And no woman has ever denied the right to a child if she wants to keep it. It's something that once Roe v. Wade was repealed, it seems like we're stepping back. And the fact that you were able to keep books in the library, even though we wanted to ban them like Nazis, I thank you for that. And with the prayer thing, I always think, yes, it's good that it was allowed, but wait until somebody who, may, who maybe wants to pray to maybe a pagan god or maybe wants to pray to Allah, then that law would immediately be repealed. I feel like the idea of Christian, I've seen it everywhere. There's no such thing. There's nothing more hateful than Christian love. And I feel like being at that pride parade, seeing the love all around, that is what I believe love is, and that's what I believe personally. Like Jesus loved everybody no matter what, and in God's own image, if he created that truly. I just don't see how people could follow a God that says to hate, that says to discriminate against people because they just don't follow it. I just believe that the world is progressing into, into a better world. And it's going to. I just think, I just think, yeah. I, and I just want to end with a sign that I saw at at the Pride Parade yesterday, which is just that, like, love is such a terrible thing to hate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dominic Preda. Um, I'm from Totowa in Passaic County. Um, and I just want to reiterate what Rabbi Joseph said in the beginning. Um, that, again, you know, there is only two genders, okay? 
God made man and woman. Uh, Paul the Apostle, who was a Torah observant Pharisee, in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 13, uh, mentioned that Adam was formed first, then Eve, okay? And that's the way it is. Um, you can argue with God, but uh, <clears throat> he's right. <laughs> he's the one who created everything. He created all of us. And I, um, I'm i sorry I kind of was, was uh, abrupt with uh, the young lady who spoke, but... Um, a choice of homosexuality is just that, a choice. It's not you're born into it. And even uh, there is a place in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, verse 9, which does mention homosexuality. So, But the point is, uh, God is not um, happy with this, what's going on today. And it is an affront to him. And, you know, he does love people, but he wants them to truly repent too. And that's what I'm going to say, uh, because he's not happy with the world today. But he will draw people to himself in these last days. And that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, with, this out, with that, we're going to close uh, public comment, move on to board comments. Um, I... Do we have time for one more speaker? Yep. One more speaker. Hi, my name is Sandra Gong. I live in Raritan Township. I'm a taxpayer. I'm the mother that took two daughters to the Pride Parade yesterday. I don't understand all the colors that are there, but there was so much love and happiness. Given the recent SCOTUS uh, decisions, uh, I expected there to be uh, more protest. There wasn't. It was really a celebration of love and life. In terms of uh, what we have today, well, you know what actually was there years ago because there were two busloads one from an AARP organization, and one that also said, I'm no longer invisible. And those buses were packed with elderly people. Elderly people. So yeah, you know, years ago, decades ago, we had this, which is that it's, we're out much more now. Relative to what gets taught in schools, I hope that the teachers actually are fair. They present both sides of an issue, whether it's abortion or the Civil War or slavery. But I also depend on the parents and the home to teach whatever they want to teach. You know, it still is a free country. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that does happen. But in terms of religion, I went to a religious school, and I expect that my religious school will teach me about religion. I'm not really depending on public schools to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. With that, we will close public comment. We'll move on to um, any board comments. Um, I would like to make a comment before we move on to anyone else about graduation. Um, on behalf of the board and on behalf of um, personally, as a parent of a graduate this year, um, I just want to thank everybody at Hunter and Central. Literally everybody. Staff, administration, teachers, counselors, custodians, operations, uh, maintenance, grounds crew, coaches, people I'm forgetting. It is the most special day. This is my fourth graduation I've attended, the first for one of my own children. Um, the um, effort that this school puts in to make it a special, heartwarming, wonderful day is just beyond. And I just wanna thank the entire school for what they do year after year for our kids. Uh, we had 670-some really happy seniors um, with big smiles on their face. It was a beautiful day. And uh, on behalf of the board and on behalf of my family personally, we are extremely, extremely grateful for the school and everybody who works here. So I just wanted to not let that go unspoken. 
Uh, board comments, Dr. Moore, is there anything that you want to respond to that we can? Um, if not, um, as I always say, Ms. Duggan in particular, I mentioned, I don't know where are you, you were here earlier. Oh, um, if there are things that we can't respond to in the moment, we'll, we will certainly reach out to you. Uh, but I was thinking maybe, Dr. Moore, you could respond to the issue of the summer work. Is that something that you can? So I, I spoke about that a little bit earlier, yeah, the okay. curriculum guides, yeah. Correct, perfect, yeah. okay, great. So that covered that. Um, some of the other issues we'll get back to Ms. We'll Duggan get back on. To, okay. yes. Great. Um, any other board comments that anyone would like to make before we move into executive session? Yeah, please. Um, yeah, I, I just want to say that um, the thank you to the last speaker for your, your bravery. Um, the speaker who was vis uh, visibly emotional in, in what they had to say at the podium. I just wanted to really thank you for your bravery and, and for sticking it out because it's not an easy thing to do. Um, and it's always good to hear what everybody has to say. And um, I just think you were really brave, speaking for myself. And uh, I also, since I got addressed directly, I just wanted to say um, I was never intending to offend anybody or anybody's religion. Um, I think I was talking about that I know in different religions there are different, um, different points of view, different denominations, for example, of Christianity. So I was referring to my experiences. I was not trying to make a blanket statement about anyone's religion or offend anybody. So if I did, I apologize for that. Thank you, Ms. O'Donnell. One other comment I want to make um, um, in response to Mrs. Pagano's comments, uh, the board will investigate that incident. Uh, I do want to make that clear that we will be investigating and looking into that incident. Incident. Any other board comments before we move into executive session? Okay, so we're gonna move into executive session to discuss personnel, HIVs, negotiations. Anything else, am I missing, okay. Uh, we are coming back for action on the HIVs. So normally we don't come back for action, we are coming back after executive session for action on HIVs. Um, so can I have a motion to move into ex executive session? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Yeah, fast forward. We're going to move, reconvene to open session. You guys good? Okay. Okay, can I have a motion to reconvene into open session? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Do we just need an eye on that, Mrs. Spitzer? Or yeah, all in favor? Aye. And then, can I have a motion to affirm Hibs 54, 55, and 56? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Oh, hearing none. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Charney. Yes. Mr. Davidson. Yes. Mrs. Kellogg. Yes. Mr. Nickel. Yes. Mrs. O'Donnell. Yes. Mr. Richard. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes. Yes. All yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>